On this episode of Busker, we explore the music scene in beautiful Iceland. From its epic waterfalls to its whale watching, Iceland has no shortage of natural beauty. The Blue Lagoon is by far the most popular tourist destination in all of Iceland. What makes this lagoon so unique is it's naturally heated by volcanic plates. The same geothermic forces which caused the volcanic eruption around 800 years ago. The Blue Lagoon is situated in a vast black lava field, which is known as the Svartsengi. The Blue Lagoon's main competitor is the Sky Lagoon. And after multiple trips to the Blue Lagoon over the years, I decided to give its competitor a chance. First thing I noticed was the Sky Lagoon was much less congested. The second thing I noticed was the scenery. Instead of staring out at black lava, you got a beautiful ocean view. Both the Blue Lagoon and Sky Lagoon have swim-up bars, and both of them limit you to three drinks per person. A couple areas where the Blue Lagoon truly does exceed is its overnight accommodations and its fine dining restaurant. If you love bougie dinners like I do, you want to check out the Lava Restaurant at the Blue Lagoon. Have these, yeah. So I was looking for some live music tonight. Yeah. And I saw half these out front and she said, there's no, <laughs> there's no live band tonight, but hey. karaoke. And I'm like, oh, karaoke, I'm leaving. She goes, no, she goes, never been to Iceland, karaoke. It's a completely different thing. Very glad to be of service. And I don't fall in love with a broken heart. No, I don't want to fall in love with you. I'm going to follow this. Yep. Well, the first night was an epic fail as far as finding any local musicians. Although I did get to hang out with a few really cool karaoke stars. The following night, I packed up my gear and headed back downtown to try my luck again. Dylan's Whiskey Bar, and um, they had a karaoke night. And I got, uh, the bar manager wrote me into that. You know, we got nothing going on tomorrow if you'd like to come and do a set. So I brought my stuff down, and the bar manager here today says, um, no can do. I said, that's okay. So I'll go do a little busking. All right, let's let's do this. Then we headed upstate. Crashed the party. One more whiskey, and I might fall in love. Hi. What are you? You think you're? You think you're? They're amazing. me. One more notch on his mighty throne. Can't you see? See that do I was having a hard time finding any local musicians to talk to, but I wasn't about to quit now. I stopped for a quick beer and a chat with some of the employees over at Force It In. How would you describe the, um, the music scene here in Reykjavik? There, there's a lot of live music. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a bar, dancing bar uh, called uh, Cricket, also downtown. That live music? music. Well, young people, live music, kind of funky. Uh, funky? Yeah, good fun. Can I ask you a couple questions just about the music, music scene? Do you um, see a lot of street performers on this? You don't see very many buskers. No. Huh. Too cold. That's interesting. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yes. I just went and I set up on the streets down there and did a little busking, put the guitar out. And, eh, 
ninety percent of the people to walk by and, and pretend they don't even see you. <laughs> so it was, it was a bit weird, but a few people stopped and you know threw some change in the guitar case. Some places here don't accept cash. A lot of people don't walk around with cash. Now you gotta you gotta put that Venmo uh, the Venmo scanner, right? I gotta make one of the. Uh, there's no cash then. Thing. Are there any areas in town where you see guys playing on the street, playing on the street? Oh, yeah. There are a couple guys, but there's not really a not a big scene for that. Well, this was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. But I wasn't about to give up. There had to be some live music in town. I was lucky enough to stumble across local musician Arnar Friedrichs. He was kind enough to let me set up a few lights and agreed to sit down with me after his set for a short interview. So, you born and raised here? Are you from here originally or we're local boy? Local boy, born and raised. And you've yeah. been doing music for how long? Um, professionally for like 12 years, but I've been singing since I was a kid. Nice, nice. Yeah. So just tell me a little bit about the music scene here, man. Is it pretty happening? Well, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, it's very, uh, we have a lot of like underground rock metal scene here. Yeah. It's pretty big here. Is it, there's a lot of work for musicians here? There's a lot of places that do live music or, I didn't, I couldn't find a lot. Well, there's like, what we do. Yeah. Uh, troubadour thing. It's like here in the English pub. And, and some other pups. Now that's the second time I've heard the word troubadour in, yeah. in two days. And then I looked it up. It's an old term for um, a guitar player singer. They call them troubadours. Yeah, originally for, it, was, it was a guy who played guitar for the king. Yeah. Okay, so that's so that's where it comes from. Yeah. Because I don't think, I mean, I've heard it over the years, but I never really knew exactly what it meant. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's cool, man. And you have a band and you um, you played one of your original songs. Sunday was really good. What was the name of that song? It was called Cold Col de Sac. Cold de Sac. Yeah. Cool, man. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put that on the show for sure. Definitely. Well, I've been here. I've been here maybe five or six times, and oh, I've right. always just gone to Blue Lagoon, and I went to the Sky Lagoon the other day, and I said I got. You're a like, lagoon guy. I like hot tubs. <laughs> Mr. Lagoon. <laughs> what can I say? I like hot, <laughs> I like hot heated tubs. Yeah. Naturally heated by volcanic plates, which yeah, is yeah, kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. But um, there's a lot of beauty here. I mean, I went and saw some waterfalls. If someone was going to come here and, you know, they had a, a few days, what would you say you must see in Reykjavik? You know what? The thing about us Icelanders, like 95% of us have never seen 95% of the country. <laughs> so we're like, like all the people say, like, yeah, you have to go to the Blue Lagoon. You have to show, see the mountains and, and the waterfalls and stuff like that. We just say that. <laughs> you say that, but you don't actually go into. Well, no, not actually. We're, we're probably more with our kids, with our families. But right. when you're grown, you're, you're you're just here in Reykjavik. Yeah. And then you have to like Spain or whatever. You, you, but I would tell people just to like drive around, drive around the countryside. Countryside. Yeah. Ju yeah, Nature. Just, Nature. yeah. Just drive around because yeah. when you drive around Iceland, you see so many things you're not expecting. Yeah. Like I I, I went with my kids like uh, on a little trip mm -hmm. in, in a tent. Yeah. And I was like, what the f is that? I've never seen it in my life. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a, I, I always said that uh, we, as, as, as Icelandic nation, yeah. we should just give up because we, we can't run a country here. Everybody is like uncle to somebody, you know, in the government. We should, should leave it to Denmark. Just <laughs> help us, Denmark, control us. Because, really? Yeah, the f mortgage. We were paying like five times the things the are amount. incredibly expensive here. yeah everything I, in everything here is crazy expensive try own, owning a, uh, an apartment yeah that's just ridiculous yeah crazy crazy i mean f Iceland. you take but, it but i love iceland you, know? you love iceland but, but iceland. economically it's it's sucks mm -hmm.